So, uh, welcome, good afternoon. I'm not really sure which time zone you're joining me in. And if you were on the group chat earlier, you'll realize that time zone conversion is not a forte of mine. <laughs> so, thrilled to be here. And um, thank you once again, everyone, for being part of this. Um, and thank you for kicking us off, Derry. I feel I have like massive shoes to uh, fill and to follow. So, thank you. Um, my intention for my talk today for TransAid is to help deepen our understanding and appreciation of relaxation and the relaxation response, both as a tool for therapy, but also as a practice of well-being. And so what you can, ex oh, sorry, before I tell you what you can expect from today, the content that I'm sharing with you today is basically a, a summary or a synopsis of content from my signature online course for busy professionals, Relaxation Made Easy. And that course is actually a mishmash and it weaves from multimodalities to help um, busy, stressed out, tired, anxious professionals to unwind the tensions that are stuck in the nervous system so that they can recover from stress, anxiety, and burnout. And so the modalities that I weave into the course are also going to inform my talk to you today. They're modalities that you can see here um, on the right hand um, side. So it's modalities like somatic sensing, neuroscience, yoga psychology, and yoga, mind body science, um, IRS and also, of course, clinical hypnotherapy. So what you can expect today is a little bit of time debunking a few common myths around, yes, I, so um, I'd like us to debunk common myths around relaxation, two common myths. I wanna also focus us on the psycho-emotional benefits of the relaxation response, because that really pertains to the work that we do, and it really supports the work that we do. Um, I'd like us to talk about a different framework for understanding relaxation, a framework that I really like to use for understanding and explaining relaxation. I'd like to introduce you to three powerful secrets of relaxation and also, hopefully, time permitting, provide you with a first-hand experience of somatic resourcing, which, as you'll come to understand, is at the heart of really accessing um, all the benefits and the psycho-emotional benefits of um, relaxation. So just a little bit about me. Uh, I'm on a mission to change the attitudes of burnt out professionals around stress. So this, these are the clients that I work with. And so therefore, these are the practices that I bring to those clients in order to help them transform those um, heightened states of anxiety and PTSD and chronic stress and chronic fatigue that keep them, um, that keep them stuck. And these practices that I'm about to share with you and the work that I do around internal conflict resolution and around relaxation come from my own personal experience. Um, so yes, now I happen to live in New Zealand, the most beautiful, I think, country in the world, most progressive, most peaceful country in the world. But my journey started in a place very, very different and very, very far away from the country that I now live in and work in and, 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 and call home. Uh, my journey in this world started um, in the Middle East, uh, particularly in Lebanon. And I was born in Lebanon just around the time of the Lebanese Civil War, which you know lasted for about 17 years and was one of the ugliest civil wars and bloodiest civil wars of modern um, history. And even though we were uh, fortunate enough to leave the, um, the, 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 the zone of conflict and the zone of trouble pretty early on in my life, I took those, um, those memories, those impressions, and those patterns of internal conflict with me throughout my whole life. Uh, until eventually um, uh, I had a big massive burnout around the time that I turned 40 and I needed to look at my life and, and heal and recover from all of those internal conflicts that were 100% subconscious as we know. Um, and so I learned throughout my life, a theme of my life has been that you cannot have calm and conflict at the same time. Right now, the, you look at any places of conflict around the world, and there are so many, we realize that calm and conflict cannot coexist, eh? Um, at peace, peace and trouble cannot coexist. Um, uh, potential and chaos cannot uh, coexist. 
And so uh, it is in this thread that I do the work that I do. And it is in this thread that I also bring you this talk because you'll come to realize that relaxation is very much at the heart of the switch from conflict to calm, from chaos to peace, from trouble uh, to, to potential. Please let me know, does this make sense, you guys? I, uh, I very rarely do one-way conversations and one-way discussions, so let me know how this is resonating for you or if it is resonating for you as we go along. And so before we get started, and this is where you will, I will need a little bit of engagement, I'd just like to find out from you, what do you like about the feeling of being relaxed? Could you please go ahead and type in the comment section below what it is that you like about the feeling of being relaxed? And notice that there's a real presupposition here that you like the feeling of being relaxed. But I'm really curious, what is it about the feeling of being relaxed that you really like and that you really enjoy? Control, calmness, what else? Tell me more. Control, calmness numbness what else stillness what else what else what else do we a sense of freedom being at peace fantastic all right uh, escape great thank you so much thank you right calm great all right so let's uh, let's go on so now that we you're anchored to what it is that you like about the feeling of being relaxed here's another follow-up question to this how do you relax and so first thing that pops to mind, just please pop in the comment section uh, below. What is it? How do you relax? What do you do to relax? And it's always interesting, Tai Chi, of course, uh, you know, asking this question to a group of hypnotherapists always gives very different responses and answers to um, the general public. Uh, and so, yeah, yoga, music, breathwork, hypnosis, mindfulness, reading, walking in nature, breathing, so on and so forth. Right. So, right. Now, usually when I ask this, thanks you guys very much for the input. Usually when I ask this to the clients that I'm working with, I get responses like the following. Hold on a second. Sorry, what's going on here with my... Yeah. So I get responses like the following. And these responses were also responses that came up in a survey by the American Psychological Association. Like I, it was like around the early, well, the latter part of the early 2000s, around 2008, 2009, um, a, a, as part of the Stress in America survey. And they asked a large sample uh, and the general public in America, that question that I just asked you, like, what do you do to relax? How do you relax? And these were some of the, these were some of the responses that came up, you know, we watch movies, listen to music, surf the web, um, uh, do exercise uh, and fitness. And now also in recent times, in recent times in the age of COVID, we see more and more of this happening. I don't know if you heard during the lockdowns in March or April when they banned alcohol in certain parts of uh, the world and people were protesting, they were saying, well, what are we gonna do now to relax? What are we gonna do now to relax? So for many people, their drinking is also, or engaging in alcoholic drinks is also a form of relaxation. So with that, uh, in, with, with that knowledge, uh, to what extent do those um, activities really help those people feel relaxed? Because what you all said uh, definitely is relaxing because it allows you to access all those things that you mentioned earlier that you enjoy about being relaxed, the feeling of control, the feeling of being at ease, the feeling of ease and tranquility and peace and calm and so on. But, you know, when, if we think about it, and this is probably a leading uh, question, especially for all of us here in this audience, the activities such as, drink, <laughs> such as drinking <laughs> during lockdown or, you know, watching movies or surfing the web is not very likely to help us access those feelings uh, of uh, relaxation that we enjoy so much and that we, and that we seek. And that brings me to the first common myth out there about relaxation. Sorry, my apologies. 
So here's the first common myth about relaxation. There's this myth around there. There's this, uh, there's this thinking or understanding that recreation and relaxation are the same thing. That when I'm listening to music, I'm, actu I'm actually relaxing. If I'm drinking my wine, I'm relaxing. I'm relaxed. If I'm at the gym, I'm relaxed. And yes, while all of those activities do um, uh, uh, involve leisure and they involve recreation and they involve uh, uh, like a, just a chilling aspect, they don't allow us to access those states that are so desirable that you mentioned earlier. Those states that we associate with relaxation, like the escapism and the freedom and the tranquility and uh, the serenity. And just to take this conversation a little bit further around um, this common myth, to help us debunk this common myth, sorry, I'm looking just at the timer on my phone. Um, I'd like us to uh, look at this, um, oh gosh, what's happening here? Here we go. Uh, at the Healthy Mind Platter from Dr. Dan Siegel. Are you guys familiar with his work? Dr. Dan Siegel from the Mind Institute. I think he's in California actually, uh, but I could be mistaken. Let me know in the chat box if you're familiar with his uh, work. And um, it's, I, I, I use his work all the time um, with, with my clients. Very, very informative. So Dr. Dan Siegel is, uh, 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 tells us that um, there are seven essential activities for the mind to keep the brain and the mind uh, functioning at its optimum. And these are the seven over here um, on the left-hand side. And I think most of them are self-explanatory, but I think the ones that pertain to the work that we're doing and the conversation that we're having today around relaxation and its empowering effect on our clients have to do with playtime, downtime, and time in. So let's just uh, quickly go through the difference between these three. So playtime is basically, you know, it's the, uh, it's, it's, it's the, it's, it's just the play. It's when we're not working. It's the activities that we're engaged in when, when we're not working. And it is very much the activities that, uh, that, uh, um, that, that the, that the myth says, uh, 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 constitutes relaxation. You know, it's the uh, going for nature walks, it's the going for a jog, it's going to the movies, it's watching a movie, it's having dinner with friends. And yes, while this is very essential for optimal brain activity and optimal mind functioning, notice that it is a separate activity to downtime and time in. Now, Downtime, according to Dan uh, Siegel, is the activity where we are going inwardly in order to uh, connect with internal sensations, internal memories, internal uh, images, and really what's going on in our internal, internal world and our internal reality. And as we go further along in our discussion and conversation today around relaxation, especially when we get to the area of somatic sensing, this is where um, uh, uh, this is very uh, supportive of relaxation because when you are in the body and you're in the moment and you're experiencing what's going on on the inside, you're actually activating a different part of the brain where a lot of psycho-emotional benefit happens. And I'm going to be talking about that in the next few slides. So downtime is a very essential brain activity, but so is time in according to um, the seven essential ingredients of a healthy brain and a healthy mind. And what time in is, is actually what we know in uh, hypnosis is about the, about, the, about the mind wandering. It's about that dream state. You know, it's just when we sit there with really no agenda and the mind just drifts and floats and, and wanders. And, um, and all of these, and all of these are really essential for brain activity, but notice there are three separate ingredients and three separate activities. And so when we are talking about relaxation, it's not just 
going out for a jog or listening to music or having a glass of wine or being with friends, it's a lot more than that. Yes, that is a component. It's a lot more than that. And it is especially those two, the downtime and the time in that inch you closer and inch our clients closer to all those beautiful benefits that we were talking about earlier that make relaxation such a desirable uh, state for, uh, for us all. I hope that makes sense. And if you've got any questions about this, um, just let me know in the chat window below or above. I don't know how it appears on your screen. <laughs> okay, let's keep uh, going. So as we know, the benefits of relaxation are tremendous and immense. And I think we're all quite familiar with the physical, physiological benefits of relaxation. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking uh, about uh, this. It's over here, and this is definitely not an exhaustive uh, list, but a couple that really relate to the age and the time that we're living in today are the first two, because as we know, the uh, relaxation response, well, and as we'll find out and delve into a little bit later, is the antithesis of the stress response. So it's the perfect antidote for the nervous system. It's the reset, it's the recharge. And the other thing that's quite relevant to be reminded of and to remind our clients of um, in the climate that we're living in today with heightened stress and heightened uh, uncertainty is that when the, the nervous system is in that part of the brain that's doing relaxation, when it's in that part of the nervous system that's all about parasympathetic mode functioning, the immune system is switched on and is strengthened and activated. Um, and that's why we find that when we're stressed out, we're more prone to getting um, sick. Um, right. And so now let's talk about the psycho-emotional uh, benefits of relaxation. So um, the physiological benefits are super, super important. But in the work that we're, that we're doing, it's really good to be uh, advocating the psycho-emotional benefits of relaxation as well. And so, you know, you don't need me to tell you, and we don't need the science. Well, it's great to have the science back up our uh, firsthand experience that when we are in a relaxed state, all parts of the brain are, 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 are activated and we can access all functions, all centers, all parts of the brain so that we can really be in our full, in our full potential. So more specifically, sorry about that. So when the, when the nervous system switches into parasympathetic mode functioning, when it's in relaxation uh, mode, as we know, as hypnotherapists, brainwave activities slow down. And when brainwave activities slow down, as we know, we are able to access, I like to call them super parts of ourselves, super centers of the brain. We're able to access the clarity and the creativity. We're able to find um, solutions to problems. We're also able to make decisions. And we're also able to learn and to grow from our experiences. And this is why we have, you know, it's that adage, well, I always grew up hearing uh, my parents telling me before I make any decision, don't make any decision, go and sleep on it. And we hear that all the time. And that comes from that understanding that in sleep, because the brain is in lower brainwave activity, we have access to all of these functions and all of these states that really allow us to show up in the world and be who we want to be and do what we want to do. Now, when we are, so other than brainwave activity slowing down and allowing us access to these super resources, we also have access, uh, opportunities to consolidate memories and consolidate emotions, which, you know, in the work that we do is, um, is paramount. Uh, and with everything going on in the general climate around us, with emotions being so heightened uh, and emotions fluctuating so constantly, it's so important to regularly and constantly go back to that part of ourself that naturally knows how to consolidate uh, emotions and consolidate uh, memories. Now, 
as you're going to find out in the next slide also, when the brain is doing that relaxation thing and is out of parasympathetic state functioning, there is an innate increase in positive emotions or renewing emotions. If you follow heart math or you're a fan of heart math like I am, there's a, uh, an increase in those renewing emotions, which is basically what drives our clients to come and see us, those feelings of calm and tranquility and confidence and motivation and all of those um, emotions and internal states. And there's a decrease in negative emotions or depleting emotions as heart math, uh, as heart math uh, tells us. And what's amazing about this is that this is spontaneous and innate. There is nothing that the conscious mind needs to do or any type of external willing behavior in order for us to access uh, a lowering of negativity and a heightening of uh, positivity and resourcefulness. And the result on the inside is this sense of um, overall sense of ease and well being. And so, just to take that further, I want to now introduce you to another paradigm to, um, to understand more the, the, this last bit, the overall ease and well being. And that has to do with the default versus present centered network functioning of the brain. Have you guys, are you guys familiar with um, the work of Julian Jaynes and uh, default uh, mode network and present centered mode network? Let me know, let me know in the chat uh, window below. I just find his work really, 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 um, really informative. Uh, and especially for those clients of ours who are very left brain thinking and who, that really like to know the why, I think this is a really great, a really great paradigm. Uh, one of many great paradigms. Okay, so when we are in, um, it's, it's in red. Um, Yvonne, I think you had a question. It's in red. I hope you can see it. It's Julian uh, Jaynes. The origin of consciousness in the breakdown of the bi bicameral mind. So he, we, he tells us, uh, I hope you can, yeah, good. So, um, the default mode network is basically the part of the brain that is default. It hijacks our attention. It's the part of the brain that keeps, keeps the brain and the thinking in that negativity loop. It's the part of the brain that's all about past conditioning and that's all about the autobiography and the self and the self judgment. Uh, it's the part of the brain that, you know, Eastern traditions and Eastern philosophies would refer to as the monkey mind. That's a very unsettled uh, mind and full of uh, negativities, innate negativities. In that default mode network, they have found that the amygdala tends to be uh, larger and more, uh, more activated, more oversized. And when we're in that default mode uh, space of the brain, the thinking is very linear and it's very cognitive and it's very rational and it's only one plus one equals two. It's we're not able to think outside the box in that, in that zone. We're not able to see other possibilities. We're not able to expand our thinking around different possibilities and, uh, and different opportunities. So it's not the most resourceful part of the brain to be in, but that is where we are if we don't do anything about our, our mind and our attention and our awareness, that's where the mind rests by default. Oh, I guess this isn't for me. Okay. So by contrast, the other part of the brain that we want to take, that we personally want to spend more time in, and also that we want to guide our clients to uh, spend more time in and hang out, hang out more in is the pre present center default mode network. So that's the antithesis. It is the opposite. So when the brain is in that space, the thinking is a lot more expansive. Uh, the amygdala shrinks. The thinking isn't linear, isn't just linear. So we're able to think outside the box. We're able to be creative about solutions. We're able to see a lot more possibilities. We're able to see a lot more opportunities. 
Um, Dr. Dan Siegel refer that refers to this state as the land of infinite possibility because this is where you have a lot of insights into possibilities and, uh, and, and opportunities. And of course, over here, we're in a non-cognitive state. So this is where the deeper layers of the mind uh, are, are more accessible uh, uh, to us and to, uh, well, yeah, to us. Now, I guess this is pretty, a pretty self-explanatory <laughs> question, especially for us here as a hypnotherapist, but to think about what are some ways to shift the brain from default mode to present-centered mode. So what are some things that come to mind to shift the brain from default to present-centered mode? Other than hypnosis, what else comes to mind? Meditation, hypnosis, meditation, yes, mindfulness. I'm also going to put in there 9-11 breathing. Yes, all of these, all of these techniques, yes, all of these techniques that focus the attention on the present moment and that focus the attention. I'm going to add to that somatic sensing, sensating. So actually feel, feeling physical sensations is a super effective way to shift from that part of the brain that's all about negativity, the autobiography, self-judgment, to that other part of the brain that's all about potential opportunity and the feel-good feelings and the feel-good mental states. Okay. Now, so another myth and these are things that I hear a lot from my clients. I don't know. Tell me if you hear these myth, these things from your clients as well, but I hear it a lot. Oh, I can't relax. Oh, no, no. I, I, I don't know how to relax. I hear, I hear that all the time. And you guys, once upon a time when I was stuck in internal conflict and in states of massive internal tension and internal chaos, I also believe that uh, to be true. Uh, but this is absolutely mythical and it's mythical and false because relaxation is innate. It's an innate part of our human design, an innate part of the human brain. So just like the nervous system, the brain that we're born with knows how to do stress, it also knows how to do relaxation. It's simply the other side of the coin. So if the stress response is all about keeping us alive, then the relaxation response is all about the opposite. It's about, uh, it's about helping us thrive. It's the part of the nervous system that allows us to do all of these things that we mentioned at the start of our talk, help us feel calm, calm, help us feel free, help us feel peaceful, so on, so on and so forth. And, you know, we cannot thrive in this part of the nervous system. We need to be spending more and more time in this part of the nervous system in order to start approximating those desired states that we talked about at the start and that we all want and that bring our clients to us. Because whatever, whatever, uh, whatever presenting problem our clients come to us with, underneath it all is a desire for these states that are so uh, so readily available for us inside our nervous system when we take the time to switch, literally switch uh, from one side to the other. I don't know if this is um, a poem that I love from Cotton Fern around what is calm. I'm not going to read it all. I'm just going to pause for a couple of moments for you to just kind of quickly scan it. And you'll have it also when I share with you the... Um, the PowerPoint and the notes, um, and I'll come back with, to you in a moment. You can just read it very quickly. Relating to what we were just talking about, what she says here, which I 100% agree with, and I, you know, and I'm sure your your anecdotal experience also shows you and confirms that calm or relaxation is within us all. It is not an external commodity. It is not something outside of us, although that's what we, are, what we, um, what we seem to think or believe. 
relaxation it just happens naturally relaxation is our natural uh it's our is our natural state and um speaking of natural uh, natural states and uh, and relaxation and calm i'd like to introduce you or reintroduce you to a theory or a paradigm uh, from the yogis and the yogis uh, are all about if you look at you know the ep the epitomology of the word yoga which is which means to connect or to unite or to yoke well unite and yoke and connect to what it is to connect to that to that part of ourself that knows how to do all of these things uh, that bring our clients to us and so According to this theory from the yogis and from yoga philosophy that I love to share and I base a lot of my work on, we are, um, we are built with five dimensions or there's five sheaths or koshas in Sanskrit in, uh, in yoga uh, that every human embodiment has a physical uh, dimension, a breath dimension, an emotional dimension, an intellectual or mind dimension, and a dimension of bliss. So all of us have a physical body, anandamaya. We all have breath. We all have emotions. We all have an intellect, but we also all have a bliss. Bliss and bliss is uh, it's ananda, and I love that word in Sanskrit. And uh, bliss is actually not an accurate translation for ananda because ananda is, um, it's just, it's everything. It's the most heightened state of human being, literally being with, with a bee. And it's in that being state that we have immediate access to all of those uh, states that we desire and that we mentioned, we talked about earlier um, on in our, in our talk. But here's the thing to keep in mind. Yes, yes. Um, uh, relaxation is innate, relaxation is within us all, relaxation is our true nature, but the five sheath theory tells us that we cannot access this if there's tensions in the sheaths or in the areas or in the dimensions uh, 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 that precede it. So if there are, and we know this innately, we know this uh, innately, you can't be tense and relaxed at the same time. If your body is tense and wind, wound up, if your muscles are contracted, if your nervous system is really, really wound up, you cannot be relaxed, you cannot be calm, you cannot be all of those things that we talked about uh, earlier. But it's the same thing with it's the same thing with the breath. If the breath is tense, if it's shallow, if it's choppy, if it's constricted, uh, if it's not flowing properly, there's also going to be tensions and, uh, and uh, an inability to access that ultimate dimension of Ananda. The next two are very obvious to us and very commonplace in the work that we do. We know that if we're feeling tense, if we're having negative emotions on the inside, it is very, it's quite impossible actually to access the, uh, the opposite positive emotions and the opposite positive state that we want to be in. So we need to resolve the tensions in the emotions, just like we need to resolve and release the tensions in the breath before we can move further into that blissful state. Just like we need to release tensions uh, from the physical body before we can move, for, move further and forward uh, with, feeling, uh, uh, with feeling and being our, our true nature. And it's the same thing with the mind. If the mind is full of jargon and, uh, and is uh, full of negative stories and, and negative self-judgment, we know that that is going to be in conflict with that state, which is our, our true nature. So yes, while it is our true nature to be relaxed and while relaxation is our natural state, the missing link or the reason why we're not in it 100% of the time or why not more of us are in it more of the time is because the part of the brain that does tension cannot do relaxation at the same time. The part of the brain that does stress cannot do calm at the same time. 
the part of the brain that does restriction cannot do freedom at the same time. And this is why it's so important to constantly be working on resolving, releasing, and healing the tensions at all of these levels, at all of these sheaths, all of these koshas, in order to naturally, spontaneously allow those uh, positive emotions and that positive state to spontaneously emerge because it does spontaneously emerge. It is our true nature after all. You guys, does this make sense? Do you have any questions about this before I move forward? If I had more time, I would say, what questions do you have? And we would do a little bit more, but are there any questions, any comments? Um, let me know. And, you know, in the interest of time, and this is what I do in my course, we actually unpack all sheaths and go a lot deeper with all of these. But in the interest of time, um, I'm just going to spend a little bit of time looking at the first sheath, the anamaya, the, the, the aspect of physical tensions that don't involve uh, yoga. Oh, um, Gamzi, yes, 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 yes. So downtime is when we're not focusing on anything, when the mind is just wandering. It's like when we're daydreaming, you know? It's basically when we are in hypnosis. Does that make sense? And um, so let's look at, how does someone in a tense state begin to change? Does it need them to get to a state like burnout to realize? That's exactly, that's exactly what I'm going to talk about uh, now, Zoe. And uh, I hope that clarifies um, your, uh, your question. And um, time in is when you are going inwardly to reflect and to, Gamzi, to reflect, to feel, to sense, to examine. It's basically what we, what we do in relaxation and also what we do in, in hypnosis. Both of these are what we do in hypnosis. I hope that makes sense, um, Gamzi. All right, so let's look at how we can start releasing, uh, great, how we can start releasing tensions from the physical body, that first sheath, which is the most gross, because so this is where we need, where we can start in order to move towards those that 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 innately blissful state that uh, that is who we are, and these are not these don't involve yoga. So uh, the three that I want us to examine uh, are the little man brain, the advantage of shaking it off, the shake it off advantage, and the felt sense of okayness. So. Um, Oops. So we know, we hear and we know from our work that where attention goes, energy follows. And by sending attention and energy uh, in a particular direction, there can be a lot of release there and a lot of healing. And I'm, if you agree with me on that, then I just want to ask you, which part of the physical body do you think has more nerve endings than any other in the human body? Just type it out in the section uh, below. And it's not organ, it's, um, it's uh, uh, nerve endings. Hand, skin, what else comes to mind? Most nerve endings, tummy, stomach, there are a lot of nerve endings in all of these. You're, you're right, everyone. There's a lot of nerve endings in all of these, but most of the nerve endings, actually, you can answer that question for yourself. When you, familiar, when you familiarize yourself with the motor homunculus or the little man brain, so the little man brain or the motor homunculus is like a topographical representation of the nerve pathways, the way that they're connected in the brain. So when you bring certain, when you bring awareness or sensation or trigger or pressure to those, uh, to those parts of the body, it triggers or it lights up parts of the brain. Now, looking at this, uh, at the, at I, I'm, I hope that you can see this clearly, um, you guys. As you look at this, you'll realize that most of the nerve endings in the human body are actually in the face. And they're not just in the face, but they're in the mouth. 
So if you look over here and you look over here, look at most of the, um, the, um, the, uh, uh, the um, there's a word that I'm looking for, Mo most of the, 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 the circuits, that's the word I'm looking for. Most of the circuits in the brain actually don't have to do with our large gross motor and gross muscular parts of our physical body. It is where it's around the face, which makes a lot of sense because this is where our sense organs lie. And it is through our senses that we interface with the world. So when there is tension in the face, there's going to be tension in the nervous system. And so with that in mind, so because I am a yoga teacher and I teach physical relaxation practices, yogic relaxation practices, and in my clinical practice, the very first thing that I do in order to aid my clients towards a naturally relaxed state and in a quick, effective way is to guide them to feel and sense the face first. I mean, we do that anyway with the um, eyelid catalepsy, which is part of this, but going a little bit deeper, spending time in the mouth and the lips and the jaw and the nostrils and the area around the lips immediately shifts the nervous system into a quick state of, uh, a quick state of calm. I wish we had more time to spend on this, but with time allowing, if we're, I hope that we can do a little bit of a practice at the end, and I'll try and incorporate this at the end. If we aren't able to do a practice, I do have like a short seven minute thing that I'll share with uh, Freddie. Um, if you'd like to experience that, plus the two other strategies that I'm going to talk about in the next two slides. So I hope this makes sense. Focus on the mouth, focus on the sense organs if you want uh, to really optimize uh, a felt sense of relaxation in your clients by, acti by, by activating that neurocircuitry for relaxation in the brain. All right, so that's the motor homunculus. The other, the other um, uh, tool or tip or, or secret for releasing tensions from the, from the body to activate anamaya in order to activate the bliss body is what I call the shake it off advantage. And the shake it off advantage comes from the work of Peter Levin. And Peter Levin spent about um, 20 years of his career observing animals in the wild and what he observed with animals in the wild is when they survived attacks on their life no, they didn't develop any chronic conditions like humans do they didn't develop conditions of chronic ptsd chronic fatigue or any of these things because what he observed that animals in the wild do after they their survival mechanism is really, really stimulated, is they go off, they remove themselves from the public domain and they literally shake it off. They literally shake off the trauma from their body and their nervous system. They literally shake off and release the stress hormones from their body and from their system so that the stress hormones don't get trapped and caught in the body. And what Peter Levin then did and, 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 and has examined since is one of the reasons why we're suffering so many conditions, chronic conditions um, uh, today is that after the traumatic experience, after the traumatic episode, after the heightened state of uh, sympathetic uh, activity, we don't take the opportunity to shake it off, to literally release and shed the stress hormones and the trauma from the nervous system so it gets stuck in the nervous system. And as we know, as we know, the subconscious mind is always looking for opportunities for resolution and, and integration and wholeness. So it starts presenting, you know, these symptoms as messengers, as pointers to look at what's the underlying cause and the underlying internal, internal conflict. Um, so, Let's look at ways that we can incorporate the shake it off advantage in our work, in our lives with, uh, with, our, with our clients um, so that they're not holding on to tensions in the physical body. Because you guys remember, you cannot be tense and relaxed at the same time. It cannot, it cannot happen. So if there is 
uh, sympathetic tension in the body. There cannot be parasympathetic relaxation or calm. So these are some ways that I like to, um, um, that I like to teach or support my clients to shake off that tension that gets stuck in the body. Um, so bouncing. For me, bouncing, I do this at least three times a day. Now, bouncing, other than shaking off, literally, because it, it approximates, you know, the shaking off that, um, that animals do in the wild, it also has the benefit, the added benefit of, um, of stimulating the lymphatic system. And when the lymphatic system is stimulated and activated, it is super beneficial for immunity. And these days, with heightened stress, our immunity is lowered. So we also need ways to strengthen and boost immunity. And a lymphatic function and activation and health is a very, very powerful way to do that. So just bouncing. And as you're bouncing, you're literally just shaking it off. Basically move like nobody is watching. Another way that's really great to shake it off is to actually do spinal rolls, you know, and to move the spine like an animal would in, in, in the wild. Not in any prescribed way. Yes, I have here of cat, cat, cow. Not in a prescribed way. Just moving, flexing and curling the spine, which is the main pathway of information in the human body. So just Getting, keeping that fluid and keeping that moving optimally really helps with the shake it off advantage. Tapping, phenomenal, eh? absolutely phenomenal for just moving things out and flushing things out. And then there is somatic, somatic sensing. And that is what I'm going to actually pre present you in if we have time now, or we're probably not going to have time, in the little audio that I'll share with Freddie, or you can email me about, we'll find a way to get that audio to you that will incorporate all those three things that I've been talking about, the little man brain, the shake it off advantage, and also the next secret, which is um, the physiology of trust, anchoring in that felt sense of okayness. Now, before I talk about that, I just want to refer you back to that poem by Cotton Fern, which I actually adore that poem. Um, and remember, she reminds us that calm is our essential uh, nature. Yes, laughter. Yes, all of these ways are great for, uh, for, sh for shaking off. Oh, great, Freddie. Yeah, 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 that will be. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. So, um, so remember, this is the poem, and this is the lady that reminds us that calm and relaxation are our natural uh, state. And so she also says that, look at what's in red. It's the feeling of support. It's the feeling of being safe and held. It's the feeling of being grounded. It's the feeling of being connected. And this makes so much sense because when you are in the survival mode, there is no, uh, there isn't a sense of trust and there isn't a sense of security. So the nervous system amps up and ramps up. So if we want to go to the opposite, we need to practice the opposite. We need to practice and rehearse feeling safe and feeling supported. And this is where the next practice comes into play, the, the next secret if you wish to call it the next practice for releasing tensions from the physical body in order to access that state of ananda that natural state of relaxation where all the magic happens and that is the felt sense of okayness now what i mean by that and this comes from my teacher richard miller from the integrative restorative institute in the united states uh, and the practice of, uh, of IREST. And so what Richard is reminding us of is that we are okay and we are whole. And we know that, right? We all know that cognitively. All our clients know that cognitively, that there's nothing wrong with them, that they are whole, that they have everything that they need inside of them. Like we know that, right? but we don't feel it. There's a disconnect between what we know and what we feel. And as we know, it's what we feel that then dictates our reality and governs our life and our quality of life. And so just repeating to yourself, I am okay, I am safe, like affirmations, for most people is not going to change their, their felt experience or their quality of, of life. It might for a small portion of the population, but for most 
people in the population just saying it out loud and willing themselves to believe they are okay and that they're supported and trusted isn't going to do it. You need to, this is where somatic sense, sensing comes into play. You need to feel it inside yourself. You need to have an experience of, of sensation of what it's like to feel okay, to feel supported, to feel grounded, to feel connected. And the more and more you bring that up, you recall it, and the more and more you rehearse it with what we know about neuroplasticity, eventually it becomes part of the coding of the gray matter of the brain. It becomes part of our reality. I told you earlier about my experience growing up, you know, carrying patterns of internal conflict from wars and war zones and, you know, history of PTSD and so on and so forth. Even though I left the area of conflict and the area of trouble 35 years earlier, I never felt grounded, safe, peace, and calm in places that I was living in, like Canada and the US and, and eventually New Zealand, because it wasn't coded in my neurology. It was only until I started coding it in my neurology that my experience was able to change and my nervous system was able to change and shift to welcome in all of those psycho-emotional and physiological benefits that we are talking that we were talking about and that we want to impart to our clients. And so if I have time, Freddie, it's about a seven minute felt, uh, guided experience. Otherwise I can share it with the group via a recording, whatever you feel is best. I don't want to take up any of Brett's time. No, no that's great. No, please do. Should I? Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm so, looking forward to it. Oh, thank you, Freddie. Great. All right. So, you're all pros at getting yourself comfortable so go ahead and just get make yourself comfortable and of course you can do this either sitting or or lying down but wherever you are just take a few moments to settle into comfort and to just allow the body to settle into stillness and then just take a few moments to feel, sense, stillness, and comfort in the body. And so if there's anything that you can do to make yourself maybe five or 10% more comfortable, please go ahead and do that now. And then continuing to welcome in that feeling of comfort, and to feel what is supporting the physical body, the weight of the physical body. Is it a chair? Is it a bed? Is it a floor? Is it a mat? What is it? And whatever it is, bring 100% awareness, full attention to all points of contact between your body and the support or the supports provided for you now. As you feel into the support, notice what that feels like in the body, in the bones, in the muscles, in the tissues. Continuing to feel and sense into the grounding, the support, that is provided for you now in this moment. Notice the body yielding to that support. And continue to notice what it feels like when the body accepts support and yields to the support provided or the supports provided. And with that feeling of support in the body and the mind, allow the senses now to just be wide open. Just taking in sights, sounds, smells, tastes all around.
and then maybe bringing the awareness, calling the awareness to settle in the mouth, in the area inside the mouth and be fully absorbed with your mind, your focus and your attention in the area inside the mouth. Sensing, feeling what's there. The sensations of the gums, the teeth, The area on the insides of the mouth. Please, no thinking, just going into sensation, feeling your way moment by moment. The jaw, sensing the jaw and the tongue. Sensing what's there, sensations ar along around the tongue, maybe a growing sense of moisture, maybe a growing sense of heaviness. Fully absorbed in the sensation and the vibration and radiation pulsating inside the mouth. And then feeling the face, all the features of the face. Then dropping the awareness into the fingertips, noticing, feeling, sensing the sensations around the fingertips and maybe the fingernails. Warmth, tingling, a pulsating of sensation along and around all 10 fingertips. Sensing and feeling the toes, the toes on the right, the toes on the left, the joints, the tips and the nails of all 10 toes. Fully absorbed in sensation along all 10 toes. And with that feeling of pulsating sensation in the physical body, just allow the mind now to recall a, a time, a place, maybe a person or an object that you associate with a feeling of okayness. And for you today, that okayness could be just okay, or it could be feeling really grounded or well or peaceful. Your mind will know, trust the first impression, the first image that comes to mind. That image could be the image of, as I said, a place, a person, an object, a wisdom figure or a pet. When that picture is there, really set, sense it, engage all the senses in that picture so that you're really noticing all the visual details in that image, in that scene where you're feeling 100% okay. Noticing everything visual or about that scene. Noticing all the sounds that are there that you that the mind associates to that scene where you're 100 percent okay maybe observing noticing what taste what maybe aromas are present in that scene maybe there are maybe there aren't just notice And then from here, please drop into the body, drop inside the body and notice, feel, sense. What does the body feel like when the mind is uh, playing pictures and scenes of okayness? How does that show up in the physical body for you? What are the sensations? 
there a feeling of warmth or tingling? Is there a feeling of expansiveness or lightness? Is there a feeling of spaciousness, freedom? Whatever is there, sorry, whatever is there, notice the feelings in the body when the mind is engaged in images and thoughts of okayness. And now please allow the image to drop from the mind and from the awareness and just remain focused on the feeling in the body, that felt sense of okayness. Feeling what it's like, feeling the feelings of okayness. This is the sensations, the feelings are your anchor to okayness. It's your inner resource, your somatic sensor for okayness. The more you come back to this somatic anchor, the more this becomes wired into your default neurology. And just know that you can recall these feelings, you can connect to these feelings anytime during the day, anytime during the night, when you want to boost or amp up these feelings of okayness and wellness inside yourself. Coming back to the feeling of the whole physical body being resting wherever it is. Once again, open up the senses so that you're noticing where you are. Allow the senses now to externalize your awareness. Feel the grounding of whatever is beneath you coming back into this moment. And when you're ready, when you open up your eyes, bringing back this feeling of okayness deep inside your bones back with you to the present moment. I hate to interrupt the, the state of internalization after these practices, but now that we're back in the real world, we understand that there's time constraints um, and schedules to follow on. I wish we had time for Q&A, but I am available to answer any of your questions um, at any time. My contacts are here. I'll also share, if you'd like this PowerPoint, I'll share it with um, Freddie. And you guys, thank you once again for being part of this, for coming along. And once again, Freddie, thank you so much for hosting this. Um, and I'll now pass it back to you and back to Brett. It was it was great, Faye, and so informative and brilliant. And Glad and you uh, are you going to put these all the slides in kind of a Dropbox and a, an audio, whatever it is you want to share with people, and then I'll I will share that with everybody. So I'll, I'll send it to you via Dropbox. Is that it? Yeah, that'd be great. I think that's yeah, how we yeah, can do it. Do that. But yeah, it was it was it was fabulous, and. Uh, and, I, and I've learned so much. I'm sure everyone else has. And now yes. I'm really, I'm really chilled as well. But uh, it's fantastic. And I, I, I appreciate everything you've done for us. Okay, thank you. It's a real pleasure. It's a real pleasure. Thanks, Freddie. Thanks, everyone. Okay. I'm from Auckland. Bye. Have a beautiful day there. Take care. You too. Bye. Bye.